Trove's combat and how you build classes can be broken up into three categories. Speed farming, where you're trying to complete dungeons as fast as possible, which means you need to have a class that has a really good base movement speed, and you will sacrifice some damage or survivability in order to have movement speed on all of your gear. Delves, which is a combination of damage and health. You need to be tanky enough to survive all of the enemies that you're going to be fighting because it is a long, drawn out battle. And Leviathans are all about damage. You you don't need to survive if you can kill it before it kills you. The efficiency of a class can basically be broken down into these three categories. Some will be stronger than others in one area, but weaker in another. I did actually make another video with a visual graphic that kind of just summarizes where each of the classes fit in the spectrum. I would always recommend that you play the class you enjoy rather than picking a class out of efficiency because you risk getting bored. So assuming you've picked out your main, let's get started with the more detailed tutorial. Shadowhunter has always been one of my favorite characters, and now I can happily report that he's kind of the best all around character for the game. He's really good for speed farming, he's got the damage and survivability for delves, and he also has the damage for bosses. Now, I also want to point out for returning players, Shadowhunter did end up getting a rework like a year or two ago, and now he's got the passive ability where when you roll, you get a movement speed boost, which is why you see me rolling constantly on the Shadowhunter. And on top of that, his basic attack will shoot through enemies and walls. But as soon as you get your classroom ability, you can no longer shoot through enemies, but you can still shoot through walls, which makes him ideal for speed farming. So the best subclass ability for Shadowhunter is gonna be pretty much the same subclass abilities you'll use on every class. I always use the Knight subclass ability because I like the extra flask capacity and more particularly I like the mount movement speed even though I don't spend much time on my mount. Those few precious seconds that I do spend on my mount, I like having the movement speed. But ideally you would be using Lunar Lancer just because again when you go big mode you can end up having a huge boost of not only damage but also movement speed or Solarian because of the sheer amount of light that you'll end up getting on the class and you'll kind of get a damage over time effect when you burn enemies. So the stats you're gonna be focusing on for your gear with the Shadow Hunter are going to vary depending on whether you're using the class gem or not. So when you're at the early game, attack speed is going to be mandatory for your basic attack. And then you could end up having movement speed or crit damage. It doesn't really matter at that point because usually you're going to end up being quite weak when you're just using your base attack. But Generally speaking, the base attack is a lot more powerful than people give credit. However, as soon as you get the class gem for the Shadow Hunter, attack speed no longer will actually affect his basic attack. It's almost like the basic attack turns into a machine gun, and regardless of your attack speed, that is just what the animation is from there out with the class gem. So you could have zero attack speed and he would still do the machine gun shot. So in that case, you would swap attack speed off on your gear and instead focus on crit damage and movement speed. For the Shadowhunter's crystal ring effect, you've got three different options. Sneaky traps, so when dodging, the Shadowhunter drops a sun snare, which is okay. But when you're at the end game, enemies don't get one shot by your sun snare, so it's not ideal to have them static, uh, uh, stunned, you know, like you would rather have them all migrate towards you so you can damage all of them at once. Uh, Tactical Seeker, when em enemies take damage from the Shadow Hunter's Sacred Arrow, a Shadow Seeker will fire from the Shadow Hunter and attack the closest target, which is going to be your most ideal ability for the Shadow Hunter for the Hidden Ring effect. But just for completionist's sake, the last ability is Unholy Heal. So when enemies with Shadow Marker defeated, the Shadow Hunter is healed a small amount. We're basically invincible at this point, anyways, with the uh, skill tree, which we'll get into. The best banner in slot, of course, is going to end up being the Leviathan banners, with the Permatorch being the best one. Uh, I craft it into the Enshadowed uh, Torch of Knotted Shadow because this is the one that has the movement speed on it. Obviously, there's a lot of different allies that you could pick, but generally speaking, Scorpius is going to be the best option for Shadow Hunter because it's going to give you a bunch of light, a bunch of physical damage, and you also get a little bit of lifesteal, which doesn't really matter that much, as we'll talk about. 
but you get movement speed when a nearby enemy dies and this class is all about speed. So from the hub down there, you're gonna come over into this corner and this is where the Grand Orrery is, which is the skill tree. And right up here is where you're going to end up getting Scorpius. You're gonna kind of need this anyways because it is one of the light nodes. Now, as far as the skill tree is concerned, there's going to end up being a few set abilities you definitely want to get your hands on. Namely, the life leech will make almost every class invincible, the movement speed nodes, the light nodes, and the damage nodes. There's a bunch of crit damage and crit hit that you can get right here, but when you're using a shadow hunter, which is a physical based class, you're gonna go up this skill tree right here because it's gonna give you a bunch of physical damage. These are pretty much going to end up being all the best flask in the game. I always end up using Deathifying, but I fully acknowledge that I'm really lazy for doing it. Basically, it makes it so that when you take critical damage, it'll use a flask and keep you invincible. Most of all, like I'm just so used to using this that I, I like the ability of being able to shut my brain off and not worry about death. But you can use Elysian Bandolier if you're trying to farm a boss because you need to alt spam. There's also Vampiric. Valorous, and most of all Conjurer's Crucible. That's the biggest one a lot of people always suggest because if you have high enough magic find, you'll just constantly recover your flask while you're farming, which allows you to farm for a longer period of time before you need to recover more flasks. The emblem is going to end up changing over time and dependent on the situation. So you'll be probably using Sure Strike emblem when you're early on in the game and you need that crit damage. You will never be able to move away from Martial emblem just because of how strong enemies are. And then this is where things kind of change a little bit because you can either use trailblazing for dungeon farming or chromatic emblem for boss farming because the reduction to your cooldown uh, unyielding is also a decent emblem if you need survivability. So the mid game stats that you're gonna be focusing on, of course, this isn't like a requirement, it's just kind of a suggestion and it's just a baseline that you're going to work from. So that would end up being 80K physical damage, 50 to 60% crit hit, but you wanna try your best to get that to 100%. And then your crit damage you want to have at 800% and up. Generally speaking, you try to get all of those stats to be as high as possible. Uh, but when you end up getting your crit hit to 100%, it means that you can start sacrificing crit hit on your gems and so on and so forth. And instead focus on getting like max health or just more physical damage and crit damage. So just before we end up moving on to the gems, I'd like to mention, as always, that the top priority you should be focusing on before you even start getting into gems and what you should spec them into and so on and so forth. Get your character max level. I constantly see people asking like how they can improve their PR and they're not even max level. Max level is going to make a huge difference because gems give you the bulk of PR in this game. So I also want to take a moment to mention that I don't have 100% the best co-efficiency. I don't really care about that because I can already kill everything in the game anyways. So you want three of your lesser gems to have two pearls physical damage, one pearl crit damage, and then no pearls into crit hit up until you have 100% crit hit, and then you can start rolling that stat off from max health instead. But then you're going to have the other three lesser gems doing two pearls crit damage, one pearl physical damage, no pearls crit hit. So th this is just for readability so that you can just be like, okay, I just need three and three. Now for your empowered gems, I pretty much just have them all the same where they're two boost physical damage, one boost crit damage, and then again, no boost uh, into crit hit or max health. The cosmic gems are a little bit more, they're a little bit pickier because you're gonna have to have all three of your pearls into light and then your extra stats are gonna be physical damage and crit damage. Now, as far as your empowered gem abilities, you want to have your class gem ability. This is still a mandatory skill on the Shadow Hunter. Not as much as it was back in the day because your normal attack on Shadow Hunter actually received a fairly big buff when the class ended up getting overhauled. But generally speaking, yeah, you still wanna end up having the class gem ability. And then other options are going to be Pyro Disc just because of the movement speed that you'll get from it. And then you could use Explosive Epilogue, but that's not really good for bosses because it only triggers when an enemy dies. So it's really good for dealing with mobs of enemies. But for my money, I'd say this is one of the only classes in the game that you're gonna wanna get volatile velocity. So the description of this ability reads, increases the shot speed of any projectile. That is 100% false. It turns out that volatile velocity basically gives you 40% more range with your shots. Now, that's not very important on most classes, but with the Shadow Hunter being able to shoot through walls, 
it's invaluable, especially when you're doing dungeons that you have completely memorized, or if you're on PC and you have the definitive boss radar mod, it means you know exactly where the boss is, exactly where the chest is. And fun fact, if you're within 45 blocks of a dungeon chest, that's the limit that you can still get the loot out of it. Now, obviously you wouldn't be able to pick up the actual loot of gear, but you would be able to still obtain the gear crafter vaults, for example. Now, the uh, cosmic empowered gem is just going to end up either being Berserk Battler, just to give you light and to give you more damage, or the Vampirium, because not because of the lifesteal, but because of the movement speed that you can get from it. And yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for me today, ladies and gentlemen. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I know that we had to go into a little bit more detail and a little bit more nerd stuff just because the Shadow Hunter kind of has these different subtleties to him. Not many of the classes do, but some of them do. Now, uh, I did wanna mention one of the big reasons on top of these videos just being complicated, one of the big reasons that it's taking me a while to produce these videos is as you've probably heard in this video uh, and all my videos over the past month, I am constantly changing my mic settings. I'm trying to really dial it in and find something that I'm satisfied with. And right now I think it's okay, but I, I might need to tweak some more. It's just been a lot of like behind the scenes stuff that I've been dealing with and it's been really annoying. Now, another thing to mention, which is uh, relevant to right now, the devs actually posted this on Twitter, implying that there is a new update coming. Now, if I had to guess, I'd say this would maybe be a Leviathan overhaul or something, but the fact that we literally see a new resource in the background of this image is a little concerning because it's probably just gonna be the same as every other Trove update where it's gonna be parasitic in design and we'll grind a new area to get a new item to get a new item. I don't know, maybe it'll just be mounts and stuff, or maybe it's just a store pack, who knows? Is this the big Trove update that we've been waiting on? I don't know. But first and foremost, obviously, they still have to deal with the duping for you guys on console. But we'll speculate and talk more about all of that in time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. I would kindly ask that you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. And then otherwise, if you want to watch more of my content, YouTube thinks that this would be a good option for you. Or maybe you should take a risk and try out my most recent upload. I've been experimenting a lot with my editing style and I'm really enjoying it, but... Uh, yeah, I'm happy, <laughs> that's what counts.